two. I strongly recommend you watch part one if you haven't seen it already. So I'm going to follow on from there. And we talked about the idea of improvising using any scale, in this case the pentatonic, as a descriptive process. Now, one of the things which I hinted at but didn't really go into very much in the last video um, was although we have what some people say, well, it's a fairly basic scale and, and you need to be playing, you know, all over the neck before you need to worry about uh, expression and all that, all that stuff. Well, I think that's completely wrong. I think one of the most important things about any communication that you make is the tone of voice. So this is where text messages and emails can often be uh, completely misleading. So we don't want to be playing as if we're sending a text message. We want to be playing as if we're in the room, we're talking to whoever it is. So the tone of voice. Now, what do I really mean by that? Well, I talked in the last video about not, you know, you know spitting notes, spitting notes out as if you're a, a cat trying to fend off a, an aggressive dog or something. You need to find a sweet spot. Okay. Now, what I just did there, I played a little snap or pull off to my root note here. But I also, as well as snapping, you notice I've just lifted my finger and then put it back down again. So I've got a very short note and a very long one. Now that's just taken two notes, but it's, it's, it's given them some character and uh, some character and um, some, some atmosphere as well. Okay, so again, another snap. As opposed to... You know, there'll be times when it's useful to do that, but you have to think of a phrase with those things involved. So equally, you don't want to hammer and snap everything. Because it's like it's kind of like a load of books just falling off a shelf. It needs to have some substance to it. So. A good way of thinking about it, although it is something of a cliche, is to think about it like a singing voice. But in this particular context, where would you take a breath and where would you not? So you wouldn't be singing a whole song on one breath, but you equally would be trying to pick the points where you took another breath before you sang a line. So I'm going to play the same line a couple of different ways here. So I'm going to start on my fourth string, again on the root note, and this is arguably the question part of something. everything there. Okay, I've slightly held the tempo back there just to give it a little bit more. I didn't just go, that's something else. Okay, but suppose I did this. Now this time I've hammered from, uh, on my third string, from five to seven. about 
this. Now again, doubling up on notes can give us some very interesting effects. Or some such thing. Now again here, this time, a hammer on, and then just giving a note a little bit of shape. So when I was, um, well you're always learning I suppose, but when I started learning about pentatonics I was listening to various players and I was fascinated by the way they could make notes sound different. So um, they would put a load of expression into something and it was, it was that that I was copying as much as the notes themselves. Now this also made me aware of different places that made sense to play the pentatonic. Now that's not to say you can't play it everywhere, you know, but you know, there's a lot of different ways of get, getting to Scotland from London, but usually heading north is the best one rather than going via Wales or, you know, via Europe and then back up again. So yes, we can play scales in, you know, everywhere on the neck, but the way I developed my knowledge of these positions and the, and the ones which I felt worked best was by copying what some of the players were doing, whether it was Carlos Santana or Eric Clapton or Frank Zappa or whoever it was, um, I was nicking stuff from. And in fact, that's a, that's a little thing to be careful not to, not to fall into. I remember some years ago, I was doing a session and uh, Joe Walsh was on this session and my biggest fear was not playing in front of him or any of that stuff um, or playing, you know, playing in the same project as him and all that sort of thing. But my biggest fear was making sure I didn't play anything I pinched off him. <laughs> anyway, that's that's another story. But okay, so when we're looking for positions to play the pentatonic, we're looking for things which make our life easier, not more difficult. We don't want to play lines like, you know, that, that doesn't sound, doesn't sound very good, does it? There's no expression in that. See, that's a lot more flexible, isn't it? Okay, so this video has mainly been talking about trying to change the sound of what you're playing and controlling your expression. In part three, we're going to be looking at a couple of little, what I would call little extensions on this scale fingering, which uh, very much play into this idea of being able to express ourselves. And we'll come to why that is very shortly. So, as I say, just concentrate on that sound. Try and get that sweet spot if you possibly can. Okay. Um, so, thanks very much for watching, and uh, if you could hit the subscribe button, that'd be great. Bye for now.